today with the opening conference uh, of this uh, congress of this conference and it is in charge of dr ross perry perry uh, is going to speak about our digital maturity why it is time in museums technology for emotion equality and community uh, this conference will reflect on the emergence of the one by one project a project that is a international collaboration of different uh, cultural institutions professionals bodies government agencies academics and commercial organizations working together to help museums and galleries around the world to build to build the necessary digital trust. So for us, it is very important to have this conference here. A uh, transferable and scalable industry partnership model mm -hmm. to lead this digital change. And in particular, and this is very important, uh, the emotional twist uh, that museums technology needs. So here uh, we have, um, this guest, uh, Dr. Ross Perry, uh, it's, it's a honor to have uh, him here. He is the deputy director of the School of Museum Study in the University of Leicester, where he's professor of museums and technology. Uh, Ross has an enormous career with more than 20 years of practice in research in the file of museums. Uh, which make him one of the most international relevant uh, personalities in the file of museums and technology. It's an unavoidable reference today for every professional of museums. So, uh, Ross, it's a honor and a pleasure you are here with us this morning. I give you pass to, to your talk and please, con when you want, it's your time. Anna, thank you so much. This, this conversation, this talk over the next 30 minutes or so is, is about emotion. And I have to say, just by you saying those kind and generous words, you know, you've made me quite emotional or, already, but that's, that's appropriate. I'm, I'm going to be a little presumptuous right at the start. And I'd like to say something very quickly and briefly, but appropriately on behalf of all of the speakers over these two days. And, and all the participants as well who are, who are helping in the workshops and in the back channels. And that's just to say to Anna, to Adolfo, and to everybody um, within the project, within this community, thank you. Thank you for bringing this International Congress together. Thank you for allowing us to, to participate and have our voices heard in such an equitable and fair and inclusive way. And thank you for showing leadership. Thank you for showing leadership in the Spanish speaking world, but for all of the world, for all of the museum technology community. Um, the way that you bring us together, the way that you set the agenda, the way that you include everyone, the way that you show leadership in so many ways is, is exactly what we need. You, you are modeling the behavior of professionals and academics within the museum technology sector. And, and we thank you and, and I thank you for that. This is going to be a very different sort of presentation uh, over the next over the next 30 minutes. You will have lots of opportunity to to watch videos, to see PowerPoint slides, to to see all sorts of remarkable examples of the way that technology is being used within the museum sector around the world right now. And these next two days are going to be full of the leading edge of development in hardware and software. Um, the most inspiring of, of thought leaders and scholarship, the projects and research that are helping us to, to, to break new ground. And you'll be dazzled, I'm sure, by, by the case studies and examples and illustrations that you'll be shown, shown on your screen. In contrast to that, I would just like to talk. So in a way to model some of the ideas that I want to talk about in this keynote, I want to just talk one to one with you now. This is probably less of a paper, less of a presentation, more of a more of a meditation, really. This comes from the heart. And that's what I'm asking us to do. That's what I'm 
asking us to notice that is needed in our sector right now, that is needed in our discipline of museum technology right now, but is needed in our world right now. As we continue with momentum and even more resource and even more collegiality to develop all of that work that we've done in the area of museum technology, I'm asking that we notice that the thing we are going to need is emotion, equity, community. We're going to need empathy. We're going to need heart to go forward. And that's the, that's the theme of this meditation uh, over the next 25 minutes. I'd like to say a little bit about a shift that we're noticing within not just museum technology, not just within the museum sector, but within scholarship more widely and within our society and cultures more widely. If we take the long view, there's an important shift that is taking place around us right now. And we need to understand that and find the vocabulary in whatever language to help us articulate what that is. So I'd like to talk about that meta-modern moment that we're now in and the consequences of that for museum technology and this conference and its community and its ongoing research project. I'd like to talk a little bit about or meditate a little bit on then emotion and how we need to turn our head more to people, human beings, and remember the humanity, the individuals that are at the heart of the digital transformations that we, we want to lead. It's the thing that we've always known is there and it's the thing that we've always assumed would make technology happen. But now's the time to go back and think hard about how those people connect with that system of technology and business processes. To give you a, a, a substantial picture of, of how that meta-modern move to, to, to people and technology and systems coming together, I'd like to share a little bit then about the One by One project and where we are with that and how excitingly just in the last month we've begun our new, our new iteration, our latest edition of work. And hopefully some of the themes within that speak very directly to, to this, this, this meditation on emotion and heart and equity uh, and community. And I probably just want to end by noticing something around empathy because this shouldn't be hard. Because of who we are as a sector, because of everything that we've done in museum technology up until now, because of the scholars we've been, the practitioners we've been, we have everything we need for that empathetic shift, that emotional turn in museum technology. So no slides, no, no reading of a paper, um, kind of in the moment, speaking from the heart, um, and hopefully, hopefully something to something to share and something to to give us some signage and to give us a, a way forward at the beginning of these incredible two days ahead of us. Let's think about the meta modern. It's easy, isn't it? When we think about technology and when we think about museum technology to be constantly looking forward. What's next? What's the new upgrade? Um, what's the latest version? What do I need to install? How can my museum have, have the very latest and the most new of hardware and software? Well, where's that content management system going? Where the, where's that collection management system going? What, what are our audiences bringing in their pocket? And what are the latest apps that they're excited by? This month it's TikTok. What will it be next month? What will it be next year? With technology, we all too easily fetishize the future. We all too easily become locked into looking to next. And what we know, though, is that there is so much value in pausing, stopping, looking over our shoulder and seeing where we've been, stepping back and taking the long view. The long historical view of museum technology allows us to see the mistakes we've made. It allows us to notice the ideologies that are embedded into the decisions that created the technologies we have today. It allows us to see these bigger trajectories that we're on. And it helps us to notice, well, things that I'll be talking about in a moment. 
who hasn't been part of that long history. It's only perhaps by, by allowing the camera to pan out, to allowing the camera to see the longer history of museum technology that we begin to notice who hasn't been in the room, the extent to which that history has been narrowed or it has been situated in particular places with particular people, particular authors and particular ways of writing and seeing that development. So there's value, even when we're excited by tomorrow, there is so much value. There's necessity in looking at yesterday. When we do that, I think something extraordinary happens. And this is moving me a great deal in my work at the moment. And it does feel, it does feel like something, a new context or something different is happening around us societally and culturally. And that has an impact on technology. Let me explain what I mean. 50 years ago, soon to be 60 years ago, through those 60s and 70s moments of, of, of the origins of museum technology, it was a modernist moment. It was a moment of great sincerity with technology. Technology in the middle of the 20th century into the, the latter two quarters of the 20th century was, was, a, was a, a solution. It was, it was power, it was engineering of humanity at its very best that would allow us to process information faster than we ever could, allow us to build catalogues that we could then share, allow us to analyze and compute and run algorithms across, across our data and collections in ways that, that, that we hadn't imagined before. It would improve the efficiency and productivity of our organizations. Museums could be more business-like have real managerial processes that they could share across an industry, reaching new standards, new standards of automation, of processing, of productivity. In that context, that modernist top context, that, that era of the catalog of classifying everything, making sure the computer could capture everything, pushing museum onto the computer because that that was the place, that was the solution for, for all that we wanted to do with information and memory and knowledge. In that context, the computer becomes, becomes something that sincerely wants to help us. And the museum computing community with great sincerity felt it had solutions. Everything in its place, all records neatly and tidily arranged every object with a code, every description aligned to a term list. That modernist moment was what the museum needed to be excited by change and to see the potential of technology within the collecting, researching, preservation, documentation, exhibiting of, of its collections. Through the 80s and into the 1990s, Philosophically, there were disruptions taking place. That postmodern moment was one that started to notice this massification of content. That postmodern moment started to question what we were putting on the screen and whether those pixelated, punctiform renderings of artworks were, whether they had fidelity, whether there was veracity in in having an experience on a computer screen. We worried about disjuncture and fissure between the virtual and the real, as if something on our computer wasn't part of reality, it was something else. We set up these binary differences between physical and digital. Many of us wrote about the life online and then life on gallery and in gallery and on site and set up these very kind of of oppositional dualities. That postmodern moment in that 80s and 90s museum technology was one that maybe reflected upon the sincerity of modernity, but then it started to question it. There was almost a cynicism in whether a museum could continue on a screen. There was playfulness, there was pastiche, even, even the phrase virtual museum seemed to 
seem to have a, a puckish, a playful, uncomfortable relationship between technology and computer. It seemed to say, this isn't quite a museum. The computer is, is disrupting. The computer is making museums something else. It's, it's warping. And, and perhaps we're uncomfortable. We're uncomfortable with the truth on the screen. We're uncomfortable with audiences and views piling into those interpretive panels and those and those labels online. We, we may be uncomfortable with, with content coming in that the museum can't curate. That white noise, that massification, that, that cacophony of different interpretations, layered and layered image, video, text, model, rendering, the museum's website, but then millions of other websites around it. That 90s moment into the new millennia was one where we questioned so much. Sometimes we were excited by possi possibilities of collage and parody and pastiche of the online museum, but we were also anxious that that cynicism had also resulted in a, in a questioning of, of what could the museum be? What would its relevance be? What part would it play in a networked world? How do we catch up with our audiences? How do we know where technology is going next? How do we know what software to buy for our museum? How do we know what, what collections we digitize first? How do we measure success? How do we know what impact is online? A cynicism, a playfulness, a concern. It was post-modernity, looking back at the sincerity of modernity and starting to question what had been built. That catalog was there, but now the collage of post-modernity was beginning to question the validity of that catalog. But today, it feels like we're somewhere else. Today, it feels as if we can see both of those moments and we can see the value of both of those moments. We can see the value of that industry and focus and coordination that, that characterize that modernist automation in the second and third, in the third and fourth quarter of the 20th century. We can look back on that and see how important it was, the value of it, and be inspired by that, by that innovation and that collective move to digitization. But at the same time, we can be inspired by and excited by the questioning eye, the confidence of the postmodern era to, to look behind that catalog, to question the assumptions within that data model, to ask who's deciding on the structure of these systems. That postmodern moment that, that wanted to disrupt and try new things and bring things into new juxtapositions and new, new contrasting contexts. We can actually look back on both of those and see value in both of them. The sincerity of modernity and that pastiche and cynicism of postmodernity. Today, our media literacy, our professional maturity, our cultural society maturity is allowing us to look at both and assimilate both and be part of a different cultural condition. Metamodernity allows us to use the power of both of those experiences, both of those historical moments, and to work with hope. What's exciting about the metamodern context in which you are all now in and that we're going to hear about in the next two days is that they, they combine, they combine that hope, they combine that sincerity and they combine that pastiche into a, into a model of hope. So our new vocabulary, it's not the old vocabulary of just classification, structure, systematization, documentation, automation, technocratic productivity. It's not that for just that form of vocabulary of personalization, individualization, online, network, media, representation, virtual, authenticity. But it's a new vocabulary, a vocabulary that can mix the two. 
In fact, remix is a great word to, to, to encapsulate that context we're in now. We can, we can comfortably process and be relaxed with ideas of intersectionality, that one thing or one idea or one project or one person can be multiple things at the same time. They don't just need to sit in one box. And the fact that they can be many things isn't a problem, isn't something that we cynically now say is nihilistic and it leaves us with nothing. We can be comfortable with those intersecting uh, identities. Our objects can have layered intersecting identities. Our communities have, our museum workers have, our institutions can, can do as well. So the new vocabulary of the metamodern museum and metamodern museum technology is one of hybridity. It's one of quantum. It's one of remix. It's one where we can hopefully, because of that experience of the last 50 years, take the best of both. The focus and structure and ingenuity of modernity, the creativity and confidence and questioning eye of post-modernity and build something quite extraordinary together. What's the characteristic of that meta-modern moment? If modernity was about the catalogue, if post-modernity was about collage, I think that meta-modern museum, it's about community. It's about centering the individual and seeing that the power that we have individually, but together to do all of those things that those different eras of museum technology wants to do together. Let me bring, bring that into a kind of tighter focus. So a moment of maturity, a kind of post-digital moment where we have a different relationship with technology that societally, politically, culturally, ideologically, things are becoming interestingly aligned, just as the computer is becoming quantum, our, our ways of reading and understanding and identifying in society are becoming intersectional, so that we, so we can in our products and our programming do things that are more hybrid. These are the characteristics of meta-modernity. For us, and for this Congress and, and uh, Anna, uh, Anna's project and, and the work that she's doing with her research, this probably comes down to something quite specific. It's about us as we start to share our strategies as we start to think about vision and leadership and processes and culture and people within our organizations in a holistic way, and we start to think about how can we transform museums digitally? How can museums be part of the digital society? And how can museums use digital to transform themselves? How can they adapt to a digital world? And how can they adopt digital technology? As we do all of those things, we need to remember, or we need to begin to introduce humanity. Those last 50 years have focused so much on the technology, which hardware works, which cables and codes to, to plug in, which software to test and, 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 and to assemble and, and how to build that interface. We spent 20, 30 years just making the machines work reliably. Then we spent another 10 years at the beginning of this century beginning to realize that actually for those technologies to have a core place, a resourced place, a fundamental and defining place within our museums, we needed business processes to wire them in, to lock them in. We needed our vision and our mission and our strategy and our policies and our protocols and our workflows. We needed all of those things to assume the presence of digital. And that's what we've done. And that's what your project is continuing to do, helping museums to assume the presence of digital in the institution, in society, and in the lives of our audiences. So we've done so well to make the technology work. We've done so well to gain maturity, a business maturity that assumes the presence of digital, the post-digital museum. But the thing that was always there, that was always there, that perhaps we've overlooked, is, is actually the thing we, make, we need most of all now, and that's people. That's the final part of that triangle of technology, 
process and people. It was always there. You know, we were thinking about those users and we were thinking about the interface and we were thinking about the audiences that would just, you know, consume and work with that content. And we were trying to understand visitor behavior with our digital technology and online with, with their digital content, with our audience's digital content. And yet we never fully allowed ourselves to turn to the experience of what would it be like or what is the experience of being a worker, being a professional, being a practitioner in a museum that's part of digital change. That's what we need to do now. That's the work to be done. It's always been there, but now it's time to develop a vocabulary, develop a critical framework, and to develop a confidence that allows us to talk about professionals, people, at the same time as we talk about those processes and those technologies. And it's understanding that those people sit within a network of technology and processes, that this is an ecosystem, that actually we need to, one, it's as if we've been thinking about one, one layer of it and we've layered another layer and now it's time to layer that final, that final transparency, which is people, and see how that is so interwoven with technologies and processes. That's the emotional turn. That's the turn to humanity. That's the turn to people that our project on One by One is now very much focused on. Let me share a little bit about that. One by One is an international research consortium that continues to grow. It's a collective that's been running since 2017 and through a series of grants um, has secured about a million pounds worth of research um, over these last four years. It initially started as a project focusing on understanding the digital skills that UK museums would need to build their digital confidence. And we helped to, to build the digital culture compass and, the, and write the digital charter for the UK government that expresses where digital sits within all work around arts and culture. And the digital culture compass is, has a tracker tool that enables any museum organization free at the point of use to reflect upon where digital sits, where does it live within its organization. At the same time, we, we understood how skills were flowing around the UK museum sector, models of supply and demand, seeing where skills were being deployed within museums, and then how people were being, uh, the opportunities that individuals had to develop those skills. The project then broadened out and we partnered with uh, organizations with the US and we were thrilled that the American Alliance of Museums has joined forces with the UK Museums Association, the first time on, on a project like this, but also the Museum Computer Network in the US, you know, right back to 1967, that community of practice has been supporting museum technologists. But that MCM community has been connected with the Museums Computer Group in the UK, an organization that goes back to the 1980s, the early 1980s, again, as another community. So all through last year, we did a series of case studies, action research projects, despite COVID, we worked entirely collaboratively online. And we, we reflected upon this time, what were the skills needed from leaders? How do you lead digital transformation within an organization? Our next iteration, this growing kind of body of work is turning to the question of emotion. We're a collaboration. We work transparently. We're always looking for partners. I hope we get to work even more closely with, with Anna and the team and the project here and the, and the community within this, within this Congress. I hope we can find ways of one by one connecting with, with your work. We work with a learning idiom. We don't go in assuming we have answers. We go in wanting to, to discover and understand and learn from whoever we work with, knowing that digital transformation will be different in different national contexts, knowing that cultural specificity matters. There isn't one silver bullet. There isn't one top-down solution. There isn't one curriculum that you can laminate on a card and say, there you go. That's what you need to do to become a digital museum. Every museum is different governance, in size, in funding, in subject specialism, in its heritage and its legacy, its professional legacies, 
in its the, the digital confidence of its of its staff, the infrastructure it has, how museum and technology are considered in that society. For all of those reasons, we have to take each museum on its own terms, each museum team on its own terms, each museum worker on their own terms, and understand what that person, that team, that institution needs to get to where it needs to go with digital, whether that's digital as something they need to adopt or digital is something they need to adapt to. We need to help the sector one institution at a time. That's why the project's called One by One. In our latest project then, we continue that learning mindset and we continue our researching idiom. We, we bring together university partners, academic partners, with professional bodies. So we ensure that the work we're doing is aligned to the strategy and priorities of, of a government or the professional agency or association in that country. But most importantly, the museums themselves are active research partners. They co-own the projects, they co-design the projects, they are, they are co-workers within that scholarship. And that community of practice, along with commercial partners and consultants and other, other parties as well, means that we, as a collective, swarm around a problem that needs solving. And, and collegially, we work to, to understand it. And as we solve it in one context, we share those results more widely and see how they could be used elsewhere. So one by one, we'll continue to grow. And we're looking to take that learning mindset, research idiom, collaborative, transparent way of working, situating our approach always within the context of that country. We're looking to continue that over these next few years. Bringing this together then, the latest iteration of One by One um, has three tracks to it. One track is looking at the qualities needed for empathetic leadership, to lead with, with empathy. What are the specific nuanced skills that, that any individual needs in a museum to be part of, of digital change or to have digital part of the, their everyday work? We have another track which is about understanding agency, how an individual can develop their own kind of courage and bravery with digital and their own voice and confidence with digital, especially at a time of precarity, especially at a time when, in, well, for the first time in our lifetimes, we can't assume that museum will always be there. Museum was always the lighthouse in the tempest. Whatever was happening in society, the museum would still be there. But with statistics around the world, talking of huge redundancies of museum professionals across the world and institutions either closing or at threat of closure, this is the first time in certainly my lifetime that we can't make the assumption that the museum will be there tomorrow. So what does that do to planning, to confidence, to, a, to strategizing, to thinking about the future, to, to being motivated to use digital? What does precarity do to all of that? We're understanding that now in a COVID and post-COVID context. The final track is around inclusion and diversity. This goes right back to our first thought in this meditation. We've looked at technologies, we've looked at business processes, and yes, we've on our project, we've looked at skills and how to lead, but because of the events of the last year, not just in America, but around the world, and because of actually just morally, ethically, legally, it's important that we do so. It's time to start asking who's been excluded from museum technology? Who's not in the room? What sort of people and what do they look like get to write the history of museum computing? And then what sort of evidence do they use? And, then, and what sort of histories of computing do we end up with? Who decides on a strategy? Where, where do they come from culturally? What's their identity? It's time to start asking some hard but non-negotiable questions about diversity, inclusion, and social justice, not in the context, just in the context of which audiences we reach out to, but in the context of, well, this community in the conference in the next two days. Who leads technology? 
in a museum? Who gets to lead? Who gets to be part of innovation and change? So we'll be asking some questions about diversity and identity and access and inclusion within the museum workforce and holding mirrors up to ourselves. And together with thinking about agency and skills and precarity and thinking about empathetic leadership and that resilient, agile, mindful, uh, communicative approach of, of, of modern digital leaders, we want to show what an emotional turn in museum technology looks like. And as we do that, not only are we helping the museums that are going to be part of that project, not only are we going to be doing something hopefully profoundly important to our sector in terms of lifting up, opening out, bringing in and including who gets to be within this museum technology community and who's, a, who's able to lead and have a voice, but in all of that work, I think we're doing something that's metamodern. I think we're doing something that takes that, that confidence and sincerity of modernity and that, that sense of collegially how we can do something and achieve something as a sector and really change. But we're also taking that questioning eye, that confident, brave voice that, that calls out what isn't right and tries to think of, an, of, of a new way outside the current paradigm. And that's what postmodernity did. But doing them together in this meta-modern meta way where our focus is on building a community, working together, foregrounding questions around equality and fairness, and remembering, remembering that there are human beings at the heart of this process, that there are people that there's you. It's about remembering again that it's heart, it's passion, it's people that will make museums and technologies work together. Thank you for listening to a meditation, not something with slides, not, not a tidy thesis, not a paper being read out, but something from the heart about the heart. I wish you well for the next two days. This is going to be an extraordinary 48 hours of discussion. And uh, Anna, back to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ross. Really, uh, it's a very inspiring conference. I took notes and hopefully we were also touched <laughs> by her with uh, some of the comments uh, you said. Please, for the audience, uh, you have now some time to make questions to Ross. Uh, we will try to ask as much as possible. You have the chat here on the stage, but also the chat on the sessions that are going to, Adolfo is going to give me that, those so we can reach uh, all of them. Uh, Ross, um, the rector today started speaking that uh, universities are more conscious now about the presence teaching, no? that the presence is now more important. So is that going to happen also in the museum context, that uh, presence and the physical experience within the museum is going, uh, thanks to this, oh, oh, uh, apocalypse of the technology with uh, the COVID, um, what is, is this going to get more important in nowadays? Do you think so? Mm -hmm. For some museums, yes, and for some, you know, for some museums, yes, and perhaps for some museums, not so. I, I, I'm always reluctant to, <laughs> despite what I've just said, <laughs> just, I'm, I'm aware of the irony here, despite of the, the grand gesture and the grand narrative I've just presented, I'm always reluctant to, to generalize about what will happen to museums in terms of their delivery model. I think it's more likely that we're going to see a variety of different types of business models, experiences, relationships with technology, relationships with audiences, over over you know the next 10 years because of meta modernity we're going to be confident that museum can concurrently be many different things we will be more comfortable with it being hybrid we will be more comfortable with the museum um in you know in one building being mostly a website and an app and in the building next door mostly being this incredibly physical um embodied corporeal experience and that's okay what we've 
got locked into in the last 50 years is thinking we had to decide and that there was a solution and we had to resolve how digital would be kind of reconciled and assimilated into the museum. Actually, it should just find the place that it needs to find in that museum for that team, for those priorities, for that community. And if presence and embodiment and sociality and physicality and tactility and having a multi-sensory experience in a quiet space without any screens and just with artifacts, if that's right for that museum in that community, bearing in mind the mission of that institution, then that should be celebrated. Mm -hmm. But other institutions may decide that in this post-pandemic world that this has helped us to understand that we can reach audiences in very different ways. We can go to their homes, the city can become our gallery, but actually there are many people who remain excluded from, from the threshold of the museum. Mm -hmm. So we need to meet them in social spaces and web places and, and, and within, within other platforms. So yes, embodiment will be, become important. Museum studies has been on a sensory turn for, for 10 years. Yes, the, mm -hmm. and, and, and yes, you know, the metamodern is about the human experience, but I don't think it's going to be one or the other. The essence of the metamodern is hybridity and intersectionality. This is the key also. Yes, uh, Pilar Martin also commented here uh, that uh, museums normally focus on the visitor, on the people, and see if they still focus on that, this will have some results, even including technology. The key issue is just focusing on, on the people, and, and this is a key issue for the things to work. And we also have a comment from Jose Anton Antonido, who says, uh, thanks, Ross, for your inspiring and honest uh, from the heart presentation. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the role of that sustainability people-centered approach can play in this new community paradigm? Uh, and a second, which, which people? Uh, OK, what do you think about the role that sustainability people-centered approach is a complicated uh, question, I think. <laughs> it I, is, I'm, I'm not sure I'm fully word. hearing. And what I think it is, what, uh, how, to, how to maintain these uh, issues and how to approach the new uh, community with that, how that is what you have talked <laughs> more or less in this half an hour. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that community word works in, in 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 different ways. And I think the way maybe that I've been using the term in, the, in in this discussion, this meditation is the community of practitioners. So I think we use that word community at least at least three different ways when we talk about museum context. We talk about the community as in the region. The, 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 the town, the locale, the environ, the, the settlement, the population of, 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 of people you know, w around the museum. And maybe we may segment or, or slice that community in different ways because we may have communities of interest, communities of practice, mm -hmm. uh, communities of learning and identity and so on. Um, so it's not a homogenous group, it's a complex group. So sometimes we, we think about community in that context. But then we may talk about the community in a very museum way where it's about audiences and visitors and learners and customers. And that, and that community then gets used within the business model of the museum. And they overlap, but they, they, we sometimes separate those. But then I'm using the term in another context, which is, the, which is us, Anna. You know, it's the community of universities and museum practitioners and government agencies and funders and policy makers and commercial organizations and independent consultants and creatives and how us as an industry, mm. how us as a profession, we need to come together. We need to work collectively. It's always been important, but now more than ever, because what's happening in our society and what's at stake, we need, we need to learn, not compete, not be rivals, but actually to share be transparent and come together in exactly the way that your project and this conference is doing. You are showing us how we can work collaboratively. Hmm. 
it is important indeed uh, it is a key issue and humanity you know to humanize those experiences and also to speak from heart thank you very much uh, to do this conference without slides to speak directly and continuously I'm going to reach one more question to at least uh, Beatriz, for example. Uh, she will say she will establish a similarity between the informatics of the museums, the one that they use, and uh, in the last century, and how it is being grown in the contemporary museum. Uh, what do you think for the future of digitalization and the introduction of, for example, uh, in artificial intelligence or uh, digital humanization, how how these future elements will influence in this uh, evolution of informatics, for example. I'm, I'm aware this is the last question, so I, I, it's a brilliant, it's a superb question. So I'll get, I'll try and give a very brief, <laughs> a brief answer. So I think there's two things I would say: mm -hmm. an obvious thing, and then maybe a less obvious thing. The obvious thing to say is. You know, the long view of history of technology, museum technologies tells us that devices will become more connected, that um, uh, platforms are going to become more convergent and applications are going to become more pervasive across those platforms and across those devices. So we, we, we know this, 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 this kind of trajectory that, that, that we're on. We know technology will become even more untethered and mobile and ambient. We know that our relationship with technology will become more personalized and it will become even more individualized for our, for our way of seeing and experiencing the world. So those, those are some of the things that I think we can be confident about, that the technology will continue to do that. We'll use it more and more. We'll notice it less and less. The mix, the hybridity between digital things and physical things, whether that's through AR or through Internet of Things, will just continue. We understand that. A dissolving of digital so that it just becomes an embedded part of our reality and society. But there's another, and my final thing I'll say, and, and another, I think, more profound philosophical change. And that's what happens when we stop talking about digital. And I think the best way I can express that is, is quantum. Mm -hmm. What happens when quantum thinking that will be manifest within our technology within you know, one or two decades, you know, that the way our computers are going to work will be predicated upon a different technology, a different sort of science. Mm -hmm. What will be the consequence of that on how we think? Because in the 20th century, the silicon chip, the integrated circuit, yes and no, on and off, one and zero, it's been a binary logic. We have had to decide whether something is true or false, hmm. whether it is there or not there, whether it is on or off, whether it is in that category or that category. That binary logic that was embedded within computer thinking fed into the data model. And the data model then fed into the way we started to think about the catalog. And the catalog then affects the way we think about our collections. And then that arrangement of collections affects the way we communicate to the world and we organize ourselves as a museum. Hmm. What if we start at a different place, a quantum place where things can be many different things at the same time. And our thought process doesn't always have to separate out and classify and categorize but it can think about intersectionality and hybridity and, and an idea being both true and false at the same time and something being on and off at the same time and something being many different things at the same time. What does that, that sort of digital thinking hmm. do not only to the way we organize a catalog or indeed whether we even have a thing called a catalog in a museum, but what does it do to our relationship then with our collections? And what does it then do to our sense of what a museum can be? I'm going to be fascinated about how quantum thinking affects the way we reason in the museum and what the logic and grammar of museum becomes then within that genuinely metamodern context of the 21st century. Thank you. This is a perfect end uh, for this talk. Uh, I'm sorry we don't have much time. Thank you, Rose. Thank you. Uh